carbon neutral, let's say, methane or methanol or formic acid or, or, or whatever. But it's, for me, it's clear that we will need to have access to hydrocarbons. The challenge is to make them carbon neutral. And that is not happening today yet. Again, the business model is not there yet. It's because the CO2 price is too low and, and, and the, fossil, the fossil alternatives are cheaper today than, than these, uh, these um, e-fuels, let's say. But, but we, we believe that they will, they will, um, they will emerge in the, in the future. That's interesting. Uh, I want to shout out to everyone. If you wish to ask anyone of us a question, please you know, put it on the chat and uh, get uh, interactive. Uh, I, uh, we do have uh, still a few minutes to go. And so I would like to pose a question to pretty much everyone here, uh, all the participants. Um, we have a whole bunch of entrepreneurs around, uh, startup people or others who wish to make some money and come up with a whole bunch of ideas um, to sell to some of the, I guess, more established guys or whatever, or help the world, whichever way you want to do it. Um, what advice would you give them? Uh, what uh, would they look at or what should they do to uh, get uh, the attention of any one of you uh, in moving forward? And uh, Jan, maybe I'll start with you again, if you don't mind. Um, I, I think the, 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 the I think collaboration is key, really. Um, I think even for for first startups, and I don't think it's it's happening a lot, but still you see it now and then. Um, I, the challenge is is so large that 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 I think collaboration is is the first thing. There is enough room in this in this challenge for everybody to have a um, a piece of the cake. So we think collaborating with amongst different um, companies, but even industries. And you see also the the line between, for example, the chemical and the energy industry is a typically one. We, it used to be, energy used to be all about combustion and thermodynamics and things turning around. Today, it's, it's, it's chemistry. Eh? So, so really collaborating much more across sectors, companies, um, and not staying in our own little um, areas, I think it would be, would be the, my advice to... to, 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 to okay. Yeah. Okay. Nick? Thank you. You know, I think um, one of the reasons that collaboration is so important uh, extends well beyond uh, business plans and technology. It's, it's, there's a certain reality that um, in, we need to stick together because of opposition. There are very strong forces out there subvert, trying to subvert everything we're doing. There are people against renewables. There are, you know, that have an agenda probably, you know, a heavy carbon agenda, but, you know, who knows, um, because a lot of the carbon folks are in renewables and, you know, they, they found a great business model just blending all those attributes. There are people who are just against it because they're against change. And in the U.S., anybody with 35 bucks can, can file a lawsuit, okay, and hold up a $1 billion project. And with the internet, any lone wolf can pull together an entire pack of wolves, you know, outcasts from families and whatnot that somehow get enabled with, with power and false information. So we have to stick together. There are, there are industry groups and those groups are always uh, evolving, but just keep that in mind. And, you know, one of the narratives that we hear a lot, uh, you know, there, the opponents who are looking for any reason to work against us, that they love to pick on anybody with uh, foreign connections, right? In the U.S., uh, you know, oh, these are foreigners coming to take our fields or you know, steal our electricity. So we we all we always have to be thinking about how we can work together, you know, to um, kind of preempt these issues and uh, assure that that we have smoother project executions. Thank you. And uh, I guess the note of uh, electrification and uh, the rest, uh, just as a quick uh, fun thing, if you would be here in the Silicon Valley in Palo Alto, you'd think there is only one electrical car in the world, Tesla, and that's it. But anyhow, <laughs> <laughs> let's move on. Yaniv, on the same question, what would you tell yeah. entrepreneurs? Which advice would you give them? How can they get your attention you know, to cooperate or otherwise? First of all, uh... You know, interesting ideas, you know, will always get attention. But I think my main advice uh, 
uh, would be to, um, to to set yourself up for you know for a for a relatively uh, long journey. If you have a good idea and you think it's you know it's uh, worth something, stick with it because uh, you know people um, I think uh, use uh, use the word trend today when when they talk about you know renewable energy and where this is headed. And I think this is a really inadequate word to. Uh, uh, to, 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 to present this, you know, this process or, or transition. I think this is more a, um, a, a multi-decade uh, generational process, you know, in a way this, you know, the train has left the station, you know, it might slow down, it might speed up, it might take a different uh, uh, a path a little bit, but, you know, overall, it's not going to derail. And, and so, uh, you know, the, I think the trends are in how, uh, you know, maybe investors and the public value these companies on the stock market. Uh, but overall, you know, on, on long term, I think there is no turning back from, you know, the world that we're heading towards, which is a world of, 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 of less carbon and, 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 uh, and more renewables. But sometimes, and, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I've been involved in renewables, you know, 20 years ago. It's, um, it, you know, sometimes it takes time, you know, for, for companies, for the market, for people to actually digest and understand and to, you know, make these technologies um, economic and uh, and I think you need to uh, to uh, prepare yourselves for uh, for a, a relatively long journey but uh, you know believe in it and it will come in the end and uh, we are especially me I'm always interested in looking at uh, at new technologies uh, uh, for me it's always about implementation so if there is a way of testing something and implementing this uh, not just investing in IP that's that's something that I'll always be interested in looking at Thank you much. Uh, Phoebe, I guess uh, being on the venture side, what would you tell those entrepreneurs? How can they get to your attention? Yeah, yeah, great question. And I would definitely echo what Yan and Nick on the collaboration side, right? It's really important to collaborate you know, with the government, with the corporate, with your fellow startup <laughs> founders. Um, and then I also want to echo with Yaniv, uh, it's really important for you to have that long belief of your startup because seeing the kind of clean tech 1.0 and now, yes, we are in the climate tech, to me, it's really like clean tech 2.0. You have a lot of momentum um, behind from the government and lots of sub subsidies coming in and then from the corporate, like uh, every major big corporation actually announced their carbon neutrality. So there is definitely a lot of tailwind, um, but really like what's more important is to, for you to understand whether the technical uh, te technical economics works for your startup. And then if you're looking at the fundamentals, right? I think Jan mentioned about uh, hy hydrogen as a molecule. So um, the, the trend's definitely like starting. And then if you're looking at the fundamentals, the uh, specific energy or the energy density definitely pointing towards like hydrogen and towards a nuclear as kind of the alternative. So um, think through that line, that's important. And um, I would also do a plug, knowing that many of you, like uh, I think, like almost a hundred in the uh, in the audience, right? Uh, are actually going to be uh, working on your startup. So in Shell, we actually have like a four main uh, open innovation organization. So Shell Ventures is one of them. Um, obviously, we provide the venture capital funds to you, and then also like uh, we have implementation deployment team internally. Basically, if you have uh, like if you are in our portfolio, then we would actually help you to do the internal DB uh, BD. I think that's really interesting interesting and uh, a value add for shell ventures. In addition to that, we have like, if you think about the TRL level, right, or kind of the stage of your company, when you have like the idea in the research space, then um, like whether you're in the college or university in the research lab, you can actually apply to the Game Changer program. Um, it's like a grant that we give to uh, entrepreneurs and scientists and uh, technologists to scale up their technology to the commercial level. Um, and then in between that, we have early stage funds to invest in companies um, to um, bridge them to the Series A. And then Shell Ventures, we ha also have um, Research Connect and then also the um, yeah, uh, also the TechWorks, Shell TechWorks, which is based in Boston. So there are like various channels that you can come to Shell and definitely look into, uh, just Google it, you will uh, find our homepage and uh, find our contact information. Yeah, and me personally, yeah, feel free to find me on LinkedIn, yeah. Acceleration. 
thank you so much. I see that uh, Steve is just about to enter or come in. Hi, Steve. So uh, we have pretty much, good morning. I'm not going to make the introduction. Someone else is going to, but in any event, I'm just finishing up. Um, thank you guys uh, very much. We had an outstanding session. It seems like there is a bright future and we've accomplished quite a bit. And uh, if you have any ideas, you know where to go and you, you know where to get the money and the collaboration. So we're all in good shape. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to me for uh, moderating this uh, panel discussion. And thank you obviously also to all our speakers. We appreciate your time and your insight. And again, for our audience, uh, feel free to use the chat box to ask uh, your questions. If you have any direct question to our speakers, they will stick around for a little bit uh, longer and they are here to answer your questions. If you want any introductions to them, uh, you can always reach out to me or to Toba and we will be happy to make uh, direct introductions. Um, Toba, are you with us? You're going to introduce our next speaker? I am. Well, I'm looking to see if they are present. Um, so maybe in the meantime, let me just say for those of you who have more recently joined, we are um, going to use the chat feature throughout the conference in order to make this virtual conference as tangible and interactive as possible. So please continue to share your questions and your insights um, along the chat side. Um, I can't tell if our next speaker is here. So let me just, let me do an introduction and, and hopefully um, hopefully they're logged in under a number without a name. So this is actually really special. So we're, we're, we're going to um, ease into a round table in just a moment, but, but right before we're gonna have a really quick pop in um, for just a few remarks from um, Senate Majority Leader in the California State Senate, Bob Hertzberg. Um, this is a very special introduction for me personally. Um, Senator Hertzberg knew and shared part of his district with my um, late grandfather, um, State Senator Herschel Rosenthal. And I was looking through old legislation of his in California in like the 1970s on solar design and natural gas vehicles. And um, so it's sort of a, a really fitting thing. Um, and so let's see, are we, are you here, Senator? Hey there, this yeah. is... I'm trying to get him on. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so right afterwards, as we're waiting, right afterwards, we're going to have a really incredible um, roundtable discussion. We've had roundtable discussions every day for this three-day series. I think this one, I'm really excited about this one. We have so many um, folks who are going to be um, sharing a lot of active insights. It's going to be around technological integration and investments. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that. Amy, feel free to chime in whenever. <laughs> okay, maybe while we are waiting, is the Senator online? Okay, maybe while we are waiting for him to be able to hop on the call, I will introduce our next uh, round table, the one that is going to be right afterwards in, in a minute or two. Um, so our next uh, round table is going to talk about uh, cross-border technology, uh, technological integration and investment and um, is being hosted by Delic Innovation. Um, Sarit is going to lead the conversation and her guest uh, speakers coming from the Wesley Group, from Shell Ventures, from National Grid, Prime Impact Fund, and of course, all of you, since it's going to be a roundtable discussion. So we are hoping that you will open your cameras and you will join in the discussion. Um, this is a great opportunity to ask your questions, uh, share with us your comments, your insight, even the technology that you're working on. Um, there was a question in the chat box regarding networking and information of the different speakers and attendees. Um, so I would like to mention two things while we're waiting for the Senator to jump into uh, our conversation. Uh, two things, first, use the chat box to introduce yourself. All of you can save, there is a function, um, you just need to save it on your computer. You can always go back uh, to the chat and uh, read it after the, uh, the presentations. Um, 
also, if you need a direct introduction, feel free to reach out to us and we will be happy to make introductions. And last but not least, we also have an online virtual exhibition that is going on and will be open for the next three months. Um, we put the link already in the chat box. I think it's, uh, it's there already twice or so. Um, you can go on and keep the networking for the next few months. Uh, we have a face gallery. You can just upload any information about your company. If you want a PDF, your contact information, what you're looking for, it's very, very interactive. Um, if you look at the chat box for Ian's remarks, this is where you can find the link. All right, Shelley, do we have the Senator online? Otherwise we will have to move on with the program. Um, he Shelley? has not logged on yet. Oh, sorry. No? No. He's here. Oh, there you go. Hello, boss. Okay. I'm here. I couldn't get on. I have a computer problem this morning and I had a staff problem oh. with getting a code. I didn't have a code. I don't make any computer, so I'm doing it on my phone trying to get on. Thank right. you, Senator. You hear me? Hi. Hi Bob. Is that is that the great Steve Wesley, the handsome Steve Wesley? I see. I, I came for you, Bob. I couldn't miss it. I love it. Yeah, but you gotta have green, man. It's it's St. Patrick's Day. I know it. I'm part Irish too, but I'm I'm working on that. No, well, good. I'm I'm not part Irish. <laughs> so I, I have to overcompensate. <laughs> We we uh, we did an introduction. Let me let me let me retake it, Senator Hertzberg. Um, okay. Just to sort of refresh. Yeah. So we're really excited to have you say a few words in this conference. I was mentioning before you came on that um, I think you know my late grandfather, State Senator Herschel Rosenthal. Exceedingly well. Mm -hmm. He I knew him. When, I, I worked on his campaign when he ran for office in 1974, and his office was on Beverly Boulevard, and it was Rosenthal, Waxman, and Edelman had the headquarters together, and I'm sure that was before you were born. Well, I remember Henry Waxman and Howard Berman. They both went to my bat mitzvah. <laughs> wow. But I was looking at old, I was saying this before, I was looking at old legis legislation of his, like solar design from the 1970s, natural gas vehicles in the 1990s. And I know that y'all share part of a district. So it'd just be great to have a few Well, I'm physically, I, I, when I was Speaker of the Assembly, my office was directly below his. He was directly above me on the fourth floor. And now I have, I, my office is his office because I have the same uh, Senate seat. And he had, uh, uh, David Birdie, who was the pro tem, had it before that. I've, I, I've talked out a wall, few walls and expanded it, but I, have, I literally have the same office that he does. He did. And what? Pat, too, your grandma. Beautiful, beautiful. So we're going to start our roundtable discussion just a second by one, just to give you a, you know, a few words to say to kind of um, to give your thoughts just right before we start our roundtable. Okay. Is that you want me to go? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and, who's, and who's my audience? Who am I talking to? You are talking to um, business leaders from um, companies, probably primarily in renewables, but these are all folks who are either senior leadership at large companies or owners of smaller startups who are looking at um, clean energy technology and looking at partnerships between um, the U.S. and Israel. Yeah, okay. Well, so my name is Bob Hertzberg. I'm the majority leader of the California Senate and former speaker. I left uh, the, I was speaker during the energy crisis and following that, I traveled the world all over the planet, including Israel, working on clean energy projects, started a couple of companies in wind, two companies in solar, I owned an electric car company in London. And there's clearly, and now particularly with this new federal administration, a significant um, increase in the interest in, in clean tech and renewable uh, 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 standards and all sorts of issues to be able to move away from from carbon to a carbonless uh, environment, especially as we face these climate emergencies. And I, I could just tell you, someone who is deeply seated both in California on the one hand and globally, you know, I just think that Israel is so inventive and so creative and so magical and has so many great ideas. And I know so many friends, friend who wrote a book about the invention uh, state and you know, creativity of innovation and the like, that, you know, so much as we move to the next generation of the relationship between Israel and the next generation of political leaders, we want to move beyond just the idea of Palestinians and the homeland and the like, 
That's not working so well anymore for someone who's been around since the days Ronald Reagan was governor. And finding common ground, and where Israel has been such an incredible leader in the renewable space and so many creative and innovative ideas, not only is it an important thing for the planet, but it's a critically important thing for the relationship between the United States and Israel, which to me, I hold in the highest regard. So thank you very much for including me. I join this because of the importance of the relationship between us and Israel at every level of humanity. And this is a, just another example of the greatness that we can achieve, you know, both as a people, uh, protecting Israel uh, and protecting the planet. Thank you so much, Senator. Really appreciate it.